Six o'clock. I call quiet. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to call tonight's uh, um, meeting to order your city council meeting, May 16, 2017, at 6 o'clock p.m. And we're going to um, stand for a moment of silence and the Pledge of Allegiance led by Mr. Crail. tonight and when you please come up would you state your name and address and you have three minutes to comment on any issue that is not on the agenda and the um, first card I have here is from Lloyd Kierman. Did I pronounce that correct? Kiernan. Kern. Kern. Thank you. I'm Lloyd Kernan, 1015 North Alexander Street, Mount Dora. I have several items but in number one I would just recommend that the new city attorney comment on Lauren, Artic Lauren Ritchie's article of 7 May in the Lake Sentinel. Go through those allegations point by point in a public format and address those to help calm things down in the great mess that's been stirred up. Second item, uh, Thrill Hill, the, the property that the city has in Thrill Hill. I would recommend that somebody from the city contact the contractor for 429 uh, beltway and see if it is permitted to use the Thrill Hill to as a source of fill and dirt for 429 thereby getting some income from the city on property that's essentially being left alone at this point. I assume that the permit for mining there is still good. Uh, gray water. The gray water reclaimed water situation is once again hitting us 
The water pressure is decreasing again in those that are forced to utilize gray water, reclaimed water for irrigation. Once again, for the fourth year in a row, I'm here and I suggest either being able to add unre untreated lake water to the reclaimed water to boost the pressure in that system or allow those who already have existing wells to reconnect their wells in the, mo in the time of drought like we have now. Lastly, the parking garage situation. I recommend that the city investigate either being able to possibly add another story to the existing parking garage or maybe contact the, the Methodist Church in Mount Dora on Alexander Street and 6th and see if they would be amenable to going in with the city and building a multi-story garage in that location that still exists within the height restrictions of the city of Mount Dora rather than going ahead and doing away with the lawn bowling courts. And that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mr. Wood. Yeah, I'm Denny Wood, 2009, I sold a Bella Boulevard. I guess I'm here representing the Lock Levin Homeowners Association Board of Directors. I'm president of the board. I guess I'm also a little confused. I've talked to the city manager twice over the last six months about uh, widening 44B out there in front of Lock 11. She's assured me that uh, 441 had a higher priority in her mind, and I read the minutes from the last meeting, and you've all discussed this, and your mayor said that 44B is shovel ready and the highest priority. I guess I want to tell you why that shouldn't be the case, and I'd like you to reconsider that. There's no light out in front of Lock 11. We've already had one death out there five years ago. The state tells us we have to have three deaths before we can get a light. We can't find two more to volunteer. <laughs> Secondly, there's a 45 mile an hour speed limit out there, and the speed is at least 10 miles an hour higher than that in front of our, our exit, and most of the time it's over 60 miles an hour. We see pol policemen out there doing speed checks maybe once a quarter. We have an older population all around that area and crossing one lane to turn left coming out of there is bad enough already. It took me over five minutes tonight and three lanes would be almost impossible. We're going to lose our turn lane if you expand that to four lanes instead of the one where we turn into Lock 11 now if we lose that. No, no residential neighborhood has ever been asked if we want this road widened by the MPO. I've checked with Lakes of Mount Dora, I've checked with Lancaster, I've checked with Park Place. Nobody's ever been contacted by the MPO or the state if we want this expanded. We don't. The MPO tells everybody this is shovel ready. It may have had the, may have had its, uh, all the surveyor, surveying done, but the city of Mount Dora still has to spend over a million dollars to move utilities, let alone what uses has to move because we have our utilities, some of them in the center of the road, some of them are along the side of the road, and they can't expand that road without utilities being moved by the city of Mount Dora. The city, or not the city, the state plans to spend $35 million for 1.8 miles to expand that to four lanes. It's going back into a two lane road. How exciting is that? We're taking a four, two lane road now that's into a two lane road on 44 down there by the BP station and we're gonna make it a four lane go road going into a two lane road. Doesn't make any sense to me. There has been no state funding appropriated for this project. Mount Dora is not gonna grow that way. 441 ought to be your highest priority around here. That's where the growth is gonna come from, from the Innovation District, from the Wakaiba. I would ask you to pass a motion, a resolution, whatever you wanna to do, to get this off the number one priority in the MPO for Mount Dora. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> okay, is there anybody else wish to speak to the um, the council on any item not on the agenda? Okay, seeing none. We're going to do some very nice presentations tonight. Um, first off, we're going to um, I'm going to call on Marsha Vallon. Please come forward. 
and Martian's going to introduce the students that are going to be from City Mount Door that's going to be going over to Far East Scotland on behalf of the sister cities and the city. Marcia. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and good evening to all of you. It's that time again, here I am. Mount Door Sister Cities Association, this is our 23rd year of student exchange with Far East Scotland. The girls will be leaving for Scotland on June the 7th, and will be returning in early July. While in Forest, they will be staying with the families of the students who will be sending their children here to Mount Dora in October. Our process for selection began last October, and we had 10 final interviews with the selection committee last December. The girls cannot wait to leave. They have been in contact with their counterparts in Forest since February. The students and their families have done just a marvelous job communicating with the families in Scotland. It is now my pleasure to introduce our 2017 exchange students, Angie Torres and Jolice Foyt. students they they didn't know about you know their decision but we knew about ours really soon so we waited a good two and a half months before we got to figure out who we had and we kind of just felt out with each other who we liked best and who we clicked better with so my student's name is Campbell um, I'll be staying with Laura and uh, we as soon as we found out who our counterpart selections were we started talking to them at, in, in a group chat so that all four of us could message each other and get to know each other really well um, and it really was a beautiful experience to just see how different they were, yet how similar we, yeah. all four of us were too, and the things that we had in common. And so after we did some talking on our own and they did some on their own, we decided to select the students that we'd be staying with, and I think we're more than happy with the decisions that we've made. But yeah. um, we know that we'll be spending a lot of time in Scotland together as well, um, because our counterparts are good friends. So I think it's gonna be really, a growing experience for all four of us rather than just you know me and my counterpart and her and, yeah. and and Campbell so I'm really looking forward to it I thank all of you guys and you know Sister City and just the city of Mount Dora for allowing us this experience and I it's an honor to be selected to go and represent um, Mount Dora I love it here and I I'm proud like I'm really proud to go representing yeah. us so thank you guys so much for that. I had the uh, privilege of serving on the uh, interview committee 
and uh, they picked the, uh, they picked the two students, and uh, I think they're going to be excellent representatives for the city, for the high school, and, uh, and for the families and going over to Scotland. And, uh, and I know they can't wait for them to get there, and, and we can't wait to have their representatives come here in October. It's going to be a great, uh, great time for everybody. Okay, uh, next on our agenda, I'd like we have a recognition of Scott Creech, Mount Thor firefighter, and I'd like to um, have uh, uh, Deputy Chief Reiner please come up and uh, start to that process. So thank you very much. We get a chance to do something really wonderful tonight. Uh, Scott's one of our paramedics, been with us for 11 years. Um, in addition to being a medic with us for 11 years, running a ton of calls, he's one of the guys that teaches the hands-only CPR classes that we offer to anybody that wants one. Um, <laughs> So, uh, a month ago, Scott was raising money for a charity, running a 5K, and a gentleman, one of the other runners, uh, dropped dead right in front of him. So, Scott's in shorts and a t-shirt, the only gear he's got are hands, hands-only CPR. Um, when you take our class, you'll know that it triples your chance of survival. Um, Scott began doing hands-only CPR, and today that gentleman's out of the hospital walking around. What an amazing thing. The only way he consented at all to being here tonight and being recognized is if it helped promote that program. So, um, any of you, I'm going to do it. If you would like to learn hands only CPR, free 20 minutes, we can do it. So, we're happy to come to where you are and do it. Uh, Scott, very cool. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you all. I know uh, hopefully uh, I'll never have to use those services, but uh, you never, never know in life, do you? Thank you very much. Okay, um, next um, we have a Adopt a Spot Award, and I'd like to call up uh, Mr. Roy Hughes to do that presentation. Roy Hughes, Park and Recreation Director. Um, I have the pleasure this evening to give out the first certificate of a program that we've been running for the last uh, couple of months. And as we get into this thing, we're uh, moving through our council people first. Uh, next is up is Kathy, and then after that, I believe John Tucker. Mr. Tucker will be the next one. And then after that, we'll open it up. Uh, this is a program that identifies the areas in the city that need uh, upgrading and made more color or something of that nature. And then these people come in, put the plants in, Take care of them and they uh, that particular spot so the first person that came forward to do that was mr crail uh, councilman crail came out and is uh, he and his wife we did a lot of shopping and we went a lot of places uh, but we found the materials we needed and at the entrance way to donnelly down the hill there at the uh, gateway uh, they were able to put in some uh, flower uh, plant bougainvilleas um, and say that three times fast. Um, and so uh, it has helped <coughs> enrich that area. Our staff were able to reestablish some water areas there. So uh, caution to those that take Adopt the Spot program, you may have to water the water in there if we don't have it there. Um, but we were able to reestablish that. So if I could have Councilman Crail come up, I'd like to give him the first certificate for this particular program. Council members, we also have um, a certificate in which we're recognizing each of our merchants who are stepping forward and they're becoming the um, person or the company or s restaurant or whomever that is watering our areas uh, in which we have no irrigation. So uh, Council Member Crail brought that certificate to us and we're also sending that out to them and honoring them for their service and assisting the program. Thank you. I would just uh, like to add a big thanks to um, uh, Roy Hughes and the folks at Parks and Recreation who have been um, very accommodating in this process and um, happy that we're off and running and look forward to the program um, flowering. <laughs> we should stem this discussion. <laughs> Okay, can I um, have approval for tonight's agenda? So moved. I have a correction if possible. I withdraw my motion. 
I like to have the uh, <coughs> art committee a position for two weeks. Two weeks. It's, a, it's a district three appointment. And the, um, I've not gotten back the paperwork yet. Okay, that's fine. No objection. I'd like to continue that for two weeks. Percent. Anything else? Any other? No. Approval of the agenda with that deletion. Thank you. I second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Um, approval of minutes of the City Council work session dated April 27, 2017, and the regular council meeting dated May the 2nd, 2017. Can I have a motion for approval, please? So moved. Second. Any comments, questions, missions, deletions? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you. Okay, we have one, two, three, four, five consent items. Uh, I'd like to have a motion for approval for the consent items as a whole. I so move. Mayor, I'd like to pull an item, pull an item, pull an item if possible. Um, item number two. Um, and um, item number five, okay. Can I have a motion for approval for the other remaining three, please? So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Any opposed? Nay. On those three? Okay. Nay, nay on those three, Mr. Sabe? Is that? Yeah, I, okay. you know, I didn't pull them, but I, I just am philosophically always going to vote against the uh, consent agenda. Okay. That's fine. Thank you. I just wanted that's good clarification. Thank you. Um, okay, Mr. Uh, Saby, item number two. Yeah, thank you. Um, as, as we've all often talked about economic development, um, I thought it'd be important that we get a slight recap um, for the public. And the reason is some citizens only get their information on what's going on in the city by listening to the recordings. And with consent agenda items, then they miss out on the opportunity to see that. Um, so it's a huge spend, it's a huge part of our future. I just wanted to, to just have a, uh, a brief um, understanding of what we're getting into so that we can um, make sure the public is aware of what we're doing. Okay, um, before we continue, I'm going to have uh, Mr. Colbert read the title resolution number 2017-66, you have it there? Yes, Mayor, this resolution is entitled a resolution of the city of Mount Dora, Florida to approve a piggyback contract and work order with Levy Consulting LLC to provide professional consulting services for the Wolf Branch Innovative District, authorizing the mayor to execute the contract in accordance with sound procurement practices and principles, providing for legislative findings and intent, providing authority to the city manager for implementing administrative actions, providing for scrivener's errors, conflicts, severability, and effectiveness. Thank you. Ms. Hayes. Thank you, Honorable Mayor, Council Members. Um, I will uh, turn the uh, innovative into innovation as the scrivener's error and correct that on the uh, title of the resolution, 2017-66. Um, this is a piggyback contract with the City of Claremont for an ex economic consultant. Um, there's actually attachment to the city of Kissimmee also um, in your packet, and that is because the city of Kissimmee actually piggybacked with the city of Claremont. That contract with the city of Kissimmee was a little closer in resemblance to what the services of the city of Mount Dora would be. Um, but we are looking to provide an analysis of preliminary target areas for business development and revenue projections in the Wolf Branch Innovation District. Um, and from that perspective, we're looking at not just Avalorn, but we're also looking at the uh, revenue in which those businesses, potential businesses, will generate for the city. Um, we're also looking to um, annexation strategies, maps, conceptual master plan adjustments, um, and the development of office space, warehousing, research and development, as well as the higher educational facility that has already committed to reside in that area. Implementation of the strategies contained within the Economic Development District Master Plan as prepared by the Renaissance Planning Group in April 2014 and the analysis of the proposed Mount Door Employment Center prepared by the same uh, Renaissance Planning Group in December 2013 are the focuses of the scope of services that will be um, uh, Dr. Levy's projected service area uh, concept. Lake County has agreed to uh, contribute $50,000 annually for the next three years um, with this contract. 
um, and we have put in the language for the budget impact is the 200 in which the council approved last year for this year's budget. Um, we have not negotiated a per scope cost yet that will be brought to you as we develop each scope. There will be a separate work order which will be presented to council with a cost effective for that uh, purpose of, of work to be handled or to be provided. Um, if you look on page uh, 56 of your packet, you will actually see the professional consulting services, the piggyback contract, which states this is the city of Mount Dora and shows the piggyback with the city of Claremont. There is also a work order attached that has the specific information as I just pointed out, um, uh, attaching this as attachment exhibit number three, um, and which has the same similar language, which focuses on, again, the two pr uh, reports by Renaissance, um, the planning group on the economic development master plan as well as the employment center. Um, Dr. Levy will um, work out a, um, an agreement with us again and I will bring that to you as we proceed through the process. Thank you. Any comments or questions? Oh, I need a motion for approval. Second. Thank you. Any comments, questions from the council? Just that I think uh, it's within our strategic plan concept. Uh, that's our initial number one priority, so it qualifies for that. Uh, originally, I was not sure about the payment, but I was, uh, our manager clarified it with me. It's through the work order process, so that we'll get back the dollar part, dollar part later. Uh, it's got a 30-day termination clause if things go south, uh, and uh, has all the indemnification and insurance coverage as well as uh, venue, which goes into Lake County, uh, uses Lake County as a venue. So it all it all fits to me nicely, and I certainly support it. Thank you. Uh, I'd just like to take this time to thank our city manager for an excellent job on um, going through the process of vetting various individuals and firms throughout the process, and coming to us with what we thought from our strategic planning months and months ago, an idea that will really move the city forward. So thank you very much. Any back from the public wish to comment on this item? economic development ideas as a volunteer, totally a volunteer. Her and I spent at least three or four hours with Dr. Levy down at Lake Nona, where he's uh, had incredible influence on the Lake Nona area for their new Veterans Hospital, their new uh, tennis center, the, the soccer practice fields. There's two or three university buildings down there. Incredible employment. His Rolodex will help us get people out to the Innovation District that none of us in this room could have, could have even thought about, and I'm highly impressed. I'm, I'm glad we're moving forward. I did not see the presentation that he made, but uh, this man is incredibly impressive, and I'm looking forward to having him on board as soon as possible, so thank you. Anybody else from the public wish to comment? Seeing none, um, bring it back to the council. The, um, 
I'll just comment real quick on Mr. Gillespie's um, uh, request for a comment. And um, I'm gonna tell you real quick what impressed me about Mr. Levy and or Dr. Levy when he came up here. Uh, we had other presentations from other companies and the other companies, they came up here, they were good, good companies, they had a lot of great experience, but they kept talking about areas that were, I knew nothing about, okay? Other parts of the country, the picture this over here, picture it over here, talked about mainly their company, it was all about them, 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 and them. Dr. Levy got up here and he talked about Mount Dora. He talked about our qualities, talked about what we can do here, about how we're positioned to be what we need to be. And the other companies didn't touch on that angle. And that was one of the, the points that I think that I, what I liked about when I heard his presentation really struck me really good And uh, at that point. So I don't know if anybody else would like to comment. Go right ahead. Yes, and I'll answer your question, Joe, from my perspective. I had met Dr. Levy a number of years ago and had actually watched his work when I worked in Orlando at Orlando Health for the 35 years I worked there. He was uh, employed by the city of Orlando. And I also watched very closely what was happening with Lake Nona. And I had the privilege of meeting him several years ago and talking about Mount Dora uh, when I was in office as the mayor and enjoyed him. And then life's changes you know, come about. So I was delighted when I saw he was brought in. I knew nothing about it until his name appeared. And I went, oh, I met him a couple of years ago and was really impressed. And basically for the same things the mayor said, he did his homework about Mount Dora. And his, his focus was what we could do in what we want to be able to provide as our vision rather than just taking something else from somewhere else and putting it there. And I, and I see the process he will use will take us to do that so it will be what we want as a city. Ms. Rolson. Uh, thank you. Uh, I understand Mr. Gillespie's comments. They make some sense. Uh, I originally, before hearing uh, Mr. Levy, uh, was favoring another, another firm. Uh, they've done some work here before, and I thought their work was excellent. Um, when I heard Mr. Levy, I was also impressed. But what impressed me most impressed me most about him was his his credibility with the county, and we are tied to the county with various contractual functions, JGs included, <clears throat> and that's important. And he also, as I think Mr. Wood mentioned. Uh, really highlighted that Lake Nona area and that that Central Florida credibility is what convinced me that he's the person to do that so uh, I, once I heard him and analyzed everything and I, and I reviewed everything the, the, the remaining three I had some notes on them some of their presentation and, and printed material uh, I believe Mr. Levy was clearly the, the correct person for us in this area right now Thank you. Yeah, I also, um, I'm quite familiar with the Lake Nona area. That was about five minutes from my previous office. And over the years, I've watched that grow in utter amazement. The, and then when Mr. Levy showed up, found that he was the architect of that, basically. And with the contacts he has and what Mr. Woods pointed out, is just his Rolodex would benefit this fee tremendously. To me, it was almost a no-brainer. Uh, nothing against the other companies. The other companies appear very good. As the mayor said, a lot of the stuff they've done has been outside the area of Mount Dora. Uh, they don't have the contacts that Mr. Levy has, which the city can benefit from. And I said, if you, if anybody in this room had been down to Lake Nona 20 years ago and basically saw the cactus, the snakes, and a couple police rangers shooting here and there, that was it. And when you see what's developed in that area now, it's absolutely amazing. And to me, I won't say it was a no-brainer, but I was very impressed. Any other comments from council members? Have a roll call vote, Ms. Johnson. Mr. Rolfson? Yes. Ms. Hope? Yes. Mr. Crail? Yes. Ms. Tillett? Yes. Mr. Slavey? Yes. Mr. Tucker? Yes. Mayor Jerome? Yes. Before we go on to your next item, Mr. Slavey, I just want to just uh, clarify on number um, four of our consent agenda, the uh, appointment of um, uh, Bob Servi is going to be taking um, a Susan in this place on the Citizens Advisory Committee for the Mount Door, or excuse me, for the, um, um, for the MPO uh, organization. And Bob Zerbe, Z-E-R-B-E, -E, and uh, real quick, and uh, uh, that he came here, he joined uh, joined City of Mount Dora in um, 27th at this past May as a Citizens Advisory Committee representative. 
Uh, he was put on, uh, he went into the, into the meeting, but he hasn't been appointed yet. So he's been attending the meetings and uh, he's a retired U.S. Air Force civilian after 26 years of service and he received the Outstanding uh, Civilian Career Award and he also served as the Director of Plans and Operations for Headquarters of the Air Force Logistics Command located in Dayton, I like that place. Uh, prior to his uh, civilian service, Bob served three years in the United States Army and the Army Security Agency countermeasures and was way to go. And uh, so he's, he's going to take, he's going to be on the MPS. I just wanted to clarify that uh, real quick. Um, Mr. Sabe, you know, item, item number yes, five. Thank you. Um, well, on this one, um, I didn't want to put the city manager on the spot, but I'm going to put you on the spot in that um, I needed to make sure this gets out here that we we need our financial advisor and the work that you've done to, to make sure that it's been taken care of, the planning that you're doing, things that we're um, contemplating with the budget. Uh, I just want you to be able to recap that and let the citizens know that while we might be spending some money uh, in the coming year, it's going to be a thoughtful way and that you know give you a chance to toot your horn on the, the firm we have and what you've done. So sorry to give you short notice, but I, I think it's important that that uh, and and I apologize to the other uh, council members, but to, to chew up a little bit of the time to make sure that you get the, the right uh, credit for the job well done. Mr. Colbert, would you please read that the resolution by title? Yes, sir. <clears throat> uh, Twenty. Oh, sorry. Twenty seventeen sixty eight. Sorry. <clears throat> Entitled Resolution of the City of Mount Dora, Florida, <coughs> approving an agreement to appoint Larson Consulting Services as the City of Mount Dora financial advisor through period ending April 30, 2020, providing for legislative findings and intent, providing for administrative action and delegation by the city manager, providing for scrivener's errors, conflicts, severability, and effectiveness. Ms. Hayes? Yes, thank you, Honorable Mayor and Council Members. Um, this is a request to approve um, a agreement, a renewal of an agreement with for our financial advisor, um, which provides guidance to the city for the development of debt issuance plans pertaining to capital projects, which could be in our future, um, to review potential economic development and redevelopment partnerships with both private and public interests. Uh, Larson Consulting will assist us in providing other general financial plans, including um, assistance in the evaluation of RFPs, um, and they will uh, review all capital projects as stated earlier. They'll provide um, recommendations on how to proceed with any, with any type of bank, uh, notes, bonds, and general obligation bonds budget, um, the banking services, project, project analysis, and similar financial transactions within their scope of services. Um, I think it's important to note that in the 2017-18 year, we actually do intend to go out for uh, through a RFP process um, and actually bid this as we should do. Um, this last time, th this uh, particular contract um, expired, so we're renewing it for three years with a 90-day um, termination policy, but we feel like it is important to go through the normal process of bidding this. Um, Larson has been with us for several years. Yes. I believe close to 10 years. I'll let Mike Shepard speak on that. We reviewed that. Mike Shepard, Finance Director. Larson and Associates have been, been with us for a good 10 years. They've been involved with every bond issue that we have on the books today. And they're a very valuable asset. They, they take a lot of time and consideration in, in what they're doing. Uh, I think the other night, worried about the, uh, the one reissued uh, note, uh, they're going to be looking at that as we go forward. Okay, and uh, they have experience in geo bonds and you name it. Right. Very extensive. Is that the note regarding the interest rate? Yes. Yes, that, the one we spoke about the other night. Very good. So they're very familiar with our They're history. very familiar with yeah, us. So they know exactly where we've been. So as we yeah. talk about where we're going, and they've been now, involved somewhat uh, earlier on with with the uh, complex that we're going to be doing. Right. 
some of the other things. Uh, and they were here for the Mount Dora Christian Academy. Right. So they've been involved in all of our history as our, our business with the city. And with what we have going before us, I think it's to our benefit yes. to continue with this uh, company as well. And again, we have a 90 day clause where we can get out if we so choose and they can do the same. And we've included a quarterly retainer for approximately $1,000. We have also included some other funding so that if we need their services as laid out in the memo, um, that we, we you know, will charge accordingly. They will charge accordingly um, based on the type of services. Um, and you'll also see them as, as we go through the budget process when we talk debt, we'll bring them in as well as several other times throughout the year. I think it's important for them to be involved um, with the council as well as uh, the community so there's an assurance of the processes that, with, that we undertake from a financial standpoint that we're supported and st supported at that point. And he would have been here tonight had he, but he, there's a meeting in Inverness, Inverness that he had to be to. Right. So. Have a motion for approval? Move to approve. Second. Okay, any other comments, questions? Mr. Ryan, stand up there. Um, I, I agree that um, having a financial advisor is an investment will more than make up for the, the small cost in, in involved. And, and I also applaud the notion of, uh, I understand the longevity of service and that his, historic knowledge, but I'm, I'm glad that we'll be reviewing it and doing a, a, a proper search just to make sure that we have the right firm and those things need to be done from time to time. That's correct. No, um, I have, um, I echo, echo Mr. Crail's comment that, that um, the only other question I have is, well, I echo his comment <clears throat> about it's a good investment and I also like reviewing bids after so, so many years, I mean, reviewing, you know, sending things out for bid to see what else is out there. Um, do we anticipate, do you know when you anticipate actually getting the RFP out it will it be like in the fall I would say in the spring so I would suspect Next we will spring. we'll go through the budget process implement the budget um, probably begin the audit process and then take the time and push the RFP out while we're in the process of of audit and CAFR because again it's you know we in, in finance we move from one session to the other <coughs> session so there's a six month in one and you're in a six month in the other so we need to time it to where there's adequate time to review that okay I was just curious thank you Thank you. Just, and pardon me for using uh, some legal principles, uh, legal office principles. The $1,000 retainer, uh, I'm assuming he will be drawing down on that or his firm will be drawing down on that or is that just a free? It's, it's a $1,000 retainer per quarter. Per quarter and w will he, w when lawyers have retainers, they, they say, well, I'll take that $1,000 or whatever the number is, and then I'll charge my hourly rate against that uh, so it's not just free, and then he gets to have hours on top of that. And I'm just wondering if... We have it set yeah. up where we have the hourly rates in here so that yeah. we can adjust accordingly. Uh, and, and then the other question is, w whenever possible, this is just a suggestion, uh, and I'm assuming a, a person of integrity as he is, will use the lowest level of hourly rate appropriate uh, you know, the vice president instead of him where it's appropriate. Based on the type of uh, request that we're putting forward, that is correct. He handles a lot of the information because he is a small consulting firm, but if that, if the, um, some of the other uh, associates can't handle it, they will, so yes. I think it's just a file clerk on there too, but you don't want that. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. They do the closing. <laughs> okay, any other, any other comments from the council? Okay, and the, anybody from the public wish to comment on this item? Seeing none, back to council. Ms. Jones, can we have a roll call vote, please? Ms. Killen? Yes. Mr. Rothson? Yes. Mr. Crail? Yes. Ms. Hope? Yes. Mr. Slavey? Yes. Mr. Tucker? Yes. Mr. Jerome? Yes. Thank you all. Okay, uh, approval of resolution number 2017-64, bid award to precision. What did I miss? What did I miss? Yes, that's fine. Thank you. Uh, approval of resolution number 2017-64, bid award to Precision Audio for the Community Building Sound Equipment. Mr. Colbert, can we have the uh, title read for this resolution? Yes, sir. This resolution is entitled a resolution, City of Mount Dora, Florida, to approve an agreement for the bid of Precision Audio Inc. for the Community Building 
sound system upgrade, approving funding from discretionary sales tax and monetary pledges from the Mount Dora patrons of the community building and the Mount Dora Area Chamber of Commerce, amending the city budget for the fiscal year ending September 30, 2017 for the discretionary sales tax fund, including the revenues and expenditures providing for legislative findings and intent providing for authority to the city manager for implementing administrative actions, providing for a savings provision, providing for scrivener's errors, conflict, severability, and effectiveness. Thank you. Ms. Hayes? Yes. Thank you, Mayor Council. Um, this is um, a request to upgrade the sound system in the community building. Um, we provided you quite a bit of information, so I'll do a summary of that and then entertain any questions that, that you might have of myself, or we'll ask uh, Roy Hughes up here if needed to answer any questions. Um, but I would like to first of all say uh, a sincere thank you to Chris Carson, Roy Hughes, and Josh Hemingway for participating in this committee, uh, for the, in, for the um, support from Brian Young um, from the um, Visit Mount Dora, who also provided some impact or inf uh, information and some um, knowledge base. We also had a, an, another person from the outside who came in and did a, just a cursory review and provided just some input to uh, provide me some direction from someone ha that had nothing to do with the entire process. Um, but this is a request for approximately $103,888.17 um, to purchase the soundboard and the sound system. Um, the team looked at this from two different approaches. The first aspect was to find an agreeable price um, and on the sound system speakers, and secondly, to look at an agreeable price for the full setup of the sound system, and including the board. And then they were to go back and negotiate that with the um, first selected company, um, I believe out of three that we presented to you back in, um, in March. Um, at that time, we identified that there was some electrical work needed that was not part of the RFP. So those funds um, are actually included in some of the pledge monies from one of the other um, processes, which I'll talk about in just a moment. $5,663 um, in electrical work is needed. The contractor for the sound system is willing to sub that out on their side. So that's a, a somewhat benefit to us. We do not have to maintain that. They will actually maintain that contract and oversee that. Um, and then in the uh, program, the company actually presented an upgrade to the speakers, a, a DOS Aero 12A line array module uh, to a DOS Aero 20A line array module, um, just providing a more significant increase in the quality of the sound. Um, but I'd like to draw the attention um, to the fact that um, we were very fortunate to um, have Mount Dora Area Chamber of Commerce pledge their $10,000 um, toward the, this program, which alleviated um, or affected that $5,000 fee of the electrical side. So that's an offset that we looked at. We also had the, the good fortune of having Mount Dora patrons of the community building pledge $15,000 toward this total program. Um, of that total process and total budget, um, we ended up having to look for some additional funds and we'll go into that in some detail. But I wanna talk just a minute about the offset of the cost because that was an important factor that we needed to bring to you. Um, as you notice, the current rental rates, um, we looked at quite a bit of the process, of whether it was the uh, community building auditorium or the lobby or the green room or the entire building. We went basically from uh, or proposing a new rate change from the 850 to the 1150 for the resident nonprofit. Um, non-resident, 1,000 to 13, um, um, and then production. We looked at a new rate, a production rate, um, so that we can show the use of this system and what it adds, to what value it adds to our community building. And I think if you look at some of the other information we provided, just to kind of go over that, it, we compared this new sound system to what some other local areas might have. So. Athens Theater in Deland, we compared it to them, to the Central Park Performing Art Arts Center in Largo. We also compared it to the Garden Theater in Winter Garden, to the Ormond Beach Performing Arts, to Flagler Auditorium in Daytona, to the Lyric Theater in Stewart, and uh, several others there. But as you go through that list, you'll notice that there are really no two the same. So it kind of gives you an idea that this is individualized based on the building and the needs of 
that particular facility as well as the needs of the community to support that and the type of productions they have. So I wanted just to point that out because I think that's an important part of this process. There's, um, and in speaking to a couple of the professionals that I, I view as professionals in this, they really made that comment and they really supported it and I can see how that is important to see and to look at, um, that there are no, there's no two centers that are same. That being said, there's some centers that have similar, similar um, uh, seats, number of seats that we can service, that we can look at on the return. So we looked at the projected increase of dollars that we're expecting about 22,000. We looked at the return. If we increase the rates, we're looking at about a 3.8 year return to be able to recover that funding, which I think is important for council to see that in four years we can recover the investment. Um, and then we can proceed from that point on. Um, there's a lot of data here and we would be glad to explain it, but I think those are the high points. The total program cost or upgrade to the facility would be $109,512. That's the entire system as well as the electrical. Um, and um, you know we have to do a budget adjustment um, to, to adjust from the original 91,000, which we showed you in a budget impact of 17,852, um, but that includes our, our other adjustments of the 15,000 and the 10,000. So it, it's some minor adjustments. Um, we're comfortable with those adjustments and we'll make those and present those back to you normally through the end of the year projections and, and um, update on the budget and be glad to answer any questions you might have. Thank you, Ms. Hayes. Can I have a motion for approval? So moved. Second. Just so, um, what? Uh, who who will be responsible for uh, ongoing maintenance of this equipment? Is this is the is do we have a separate ma you know maintenance contract with this installation vendor, et cetera? Or? We do have a contract with them um, that goes on. If you um, look at, um, I read through it earlier in page. Roy. Can you come up, Roy, for a second? I think you might be able to reference it quicker than I could. Um, I was looking at jumpers and high flexes and everything, and the shades came down. Yeah, we also have a there. warranty, but also we have precision here tonight, and Scott's here, okay. who is the technician. And as okay. much as I've learned in two years on this project, this man still knows more than I'll ever know about these things. So he might be able to explain a little bit more about the, the warranty. We had a, if, I mean, I understand warranty, but right. warranties run out after a while, and and I'm just wondering, you know, uh, how how many how long the system Scott? will, hmm? yeah, and how how long well, the system is will be state of the art, you know, uh, or right. expected to last, and then <laughs> how how long will the will maintenance be required and who will be doing that maintenance? Well, in general, the system's going to be good for about 15, 20 years. Okay. okay? And as things progress and you grow, of course, then it'll change. Um, as far as the warranty, the manufacturer the warranty is five years on the product. It does not include labor, okay? We use the product ourselves when we do a lot of very large shows. I would say since 2012 till now, owning the product myself, we fixed maybe two items. I mean, it's a very, you're not gonna push the system in there. It's, it's, it's gonna do you very, very well. It's gonna help you grow. And I don't think you'll have very many issues. And if, if I do, what I usually do, like we take care of mangoes in Orlando on I drive, we, we charge them $65 an hour for repairs. I mean, for you guys, I can't see you in the next five years needing much of anything with it. I think it's going to be more like training Kenny more than anything, you know, and supporting that. And we're here a lot, so like we're, we're here this Friday. So, you know, we'll be willing to help with that relationship, even without a charge, I mean, for a lot of it. I want to see it grow. I want to see it grow for you and me. You know, yeah, I just wasn't sure whether it needed routine maintenance like vehicles do. No, <laughs> no, no, it does not. I know no. nothing about sales. No. No. I think you're real good there. <laughs> okay. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, the thing I liked about this, and uh, sorry for those that are, you know, Darren and Mayor Sinet, I think it's uh, the daily rates, time to adjust those upward. Uh, for example, for a nonprofit, I'm going from $85 to $115, uh, that, I don't think anybody should go broke on, th on $30 
for an event. And uh, it's long overdue, I think, to raise these rates to be comfortably uh, competitive. And uh, uh, I think it's just responsible for us as uh, representatives of taxpayers to make sure these are kept competitive with, with regional uh, pricing. And I totally support the, uh, the upgrade. I think we agreed at a previous council meeting we would do the full, full upgrade instead of piecemeal or however that was structured. So I support that, and it sounds like the five-year warranty pretty much fits into the repayment program, except for the labor part. So uh, it seems, seems very valuable to me to approve this. I support it. Sorry. Um, Council Member Tillard, I also noticed, I knew I had seen it on the exhibit. It actually talks about the, um, the warranty on the workmanship for two years also. So the five years is on the uh, equipment and the two years on the other. So just want to point that out. Thank you, Mayor. Um, my, my question is about the, the uh, I guess, the term acoustics. Um, you know, I have no question about the actual equipment, but in your professional opinion, uh, you know, what, what is it that, that we might need to do um, outside of the equipment or what you would do, um, you know, with that facility to get the most out of it? Um, and I'm thinking, I don't know, it, it, does that make sense, the idea that this, yeah. you, you're installing a Cadillac, I would hope, in your mind, right. and, uh, you know, in in our location, what is it that we could do to get even more benefit out of that sound? Possibly a little more treatment of the walls, but this system is designed and it's already calculated in drawings I did. It's going to be focused on the crowd, not the walls. Older systems and even the one you have in there now hit the back wall bounce and cause issues. This is going to be focused directly on the crowd. So there's not really going to be very much wasted energy you got to deal with and I know you have some treatment already it, it's almost we've already flown the Aero 12 rig in there so we know what it is and and I just believe that for the most part you probably don't have to do a whole lot I suggested maybe moving the audio console out of that booth and up and move some chairs and maybe add the chairs in the back row and do some things like that it would be better for the engineer to be you know, position he could hear because there's an overhang that's really bad in engineer. It's a base trap back there. So that's the biggest suggestion. The rest of it, I think you'll be fine. Thank you. Well, I, I'm glad that this is coming to a close. Um, I'm also very happy with the partnerships that have been mentioned already. That's terrific. We're, we're all better when we um, can team up like this. I'm also glad that we're getting a, a high quality, I don't know, Cadillac, but it's, a, it, it's gonna it's run Cadillac. for a, a long time um, and um, it will continue to do what it will do the first day. It's what we don't know is what will be state of the art in, in six or 10 years, whatever. And I, I'm also pleased with the restructuring of the rates and I think the citizens um, we'll certainly understand that uh, if we can, uh, based on the same number of concerts that, or events that we've had in the past year, the payback is should be less than four years. Um, that's a that's a pretty good thing as well. So this is all coming together very well. I know Chris is going to fly that uh, that thing and make the most out of it, and um, I'm, I'm very happy with what with the way it came out. Yeah, um, one, one final comment um, to, to um, Ms. Hayes. We, I'm, I'm assuming tonight we're going to approve the purchasing of this equipment. When w we will see the um, approval of the uh, revised rate structure during the budget process, that's correct? Yes, so, ma'am, you'll see so the we'll schedule see as part. Rates, nothing, nothing lower than these rates. No, these because rates will be the rates you'll see as part of the fee schedule it. that you'll adopt it during the process. During the budget. Okay, and I just want to make sure that we're not also approving rates tonight. One other comment, Mayor, if I might. Uh, I remember also uh, Brian saying that the, the acts that come here that are really needing this and wanting this and we're going to attract bigger, better, more popular uh, programs if I'm correct in remembering your previous comments, Brian and, and Don as well. Uh, so, so, 
so I think uh, that's another thing that bodes well for approving this and moving on with the ASAP. Springsteen next year, Frank. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still pushing for Moody Blues myself. Okay. Is there a bit of Thank you, Mayor. Um, one of the things that you mentioned about getting valuation, I, I know in the business world, some of the things that we've done on capital projects is we do a, a post-mortem um, approximately one year after the purchase and we look at the differential and rates that we did charge and then look at it and we say, you know, whatever whatever the math is. We thought we were going to bring in $10,000 more and then we look at it and we say, well, what did we actually bring in more to see if, if we made a good decision? It's not to beat ourselves up, but it's to actually learn uh, about the assumptions we make and whatnot in the process. Absolutely. <coughs> Any questions? One second. Anybody from the public wish to comment and a question? Rosanna Botto, uh, 541 East First Avenue. I'm the secretary of the patrons of the community building and Arliss Turner's one of the four of us. Judy Smathers couldn't be here and Renee Maloda is the fourth. And we're thrilled about this. We've been working with Chris, who's been doing a fabulous job putting all this together We've been working with him for months on the idea of this and how we could partner with it. And we're the group that raised the funds uh, to furnish the community building. We're the group that raised the money to turn the green room from a white room into a green room and make it more attractive and more usable. So for us, your vote to approve this is icing on the cake and we'll continue to do what we have to do and can do to make improvements in the community building because it really is a historic, uh, cornerstone building in this town and the fact that we can attract more and not lose top-notch groups to other places um, really benefits our residents so thank you very much thank you well, one more comment mayor if i might um, the uh, in addition to thanking the patrons for all the work and the money they put in it, uh, and it's been mentioned by our manager but thanks to the chamber for putting up some uh, cash as well and uh, please know from us on Troy Street for everybody how much we value that thank you just real quick before we vote um, just want to just want to mention that the, the, the idea of earlier mentioned about partnerships in the chamber and then you know the different organizations that work on these things uh, Mount Dora is a uh, is someplace special there's no doubt about it and uh, uh, when there's things like this happen and we get the the community support and we get the volunteers and everybody else who comes together to make these projects work it's a uh, it's really a sight to see what can be done when we all get together and do something like that and um, uh, anyway um, have a roll call vote any, any other comments from council okay roll I know call vote, there you go thank you. Mr. Crail yes Ms. Hoax yes Mr. Rothman? Yes. Mr. Slaby? Yes. Mr. Tucker? Yes. Ms. Tillett? Yes. Mayor Jerome? Yes. Thank you all for everything. Okay. Uh, okay. <clears throat> Approval of resolution number 2017-67 vehicle purchase. Uh, Mr. Colbert, can I have the title of that, please? Yes, sir. This resolution is entitled a resolution the City of Mount Dora, Florida for the purchase of citywide replacement vehicles providing for legislative findings and intent providing for authority to the city manager for implementing administrative actions providing for savings provision providing for scrivener's errors conflict severability and an effective fee. thank you miss hayes yes thank you honorable mayor council members um this is a request for council to approve the purchase of four new fleet vehicles um since the um report was put together we've actually pulled one of the vehicles for the electric department, that vehicle being pulled, that was with your um, contract piggyback with National Joint Powers Alliance. We'll bring that back to you at a later time. But the other three vehicles um, are currently um, more than 10 years old. Um, they have more than 150,000 miles on them. Um, there is a lot of mechanical issues um, and we had very low uh, residual value as you would expect with this, this year of uh, vehicles. Um, we have a plan for this. We put this in last year's budget, which was approved uh, by council, as you're aware. Um, so this is a budgeted line item. We're requesting that you um, uh, approve the piggyback um, with the Florida Sheriff's Association bid number FSA 16-VEL 14.0 um, for um, those vehicles. And um, 
I'd be glad to answer any questions you might have, but this is pretty much at this point a standard practice. Um, you will notice in the future that all the vehicles will um, actually be presented to council at one time, and that will be in September at the second meeting. Once you've approved the next year's budget, um, we'll make the purchase for all vehicles um, through one um, request, and therefore we can order them by October 1 of each year so that they'll be in time um, for that current year. So we will be changing this practice going forward so that you don't see these type of uh, requests throughout a year. So I'd be glad to answer any questions, but the piggyback contracts are attached. And I move, I move approval of resolution 2017-67 with the exception of the electrical portion and presumably we'll amend the resolution to co make we that will. correction for our council. Second. Second. Any um, additional comments, uh, questions? There are two references on page one of the resolution that refers to exhibit two, and we will uh, take council action as an amendment to the resolution and redo the first page, but you can certainly adopt it as amended. Like that. that was my motion to approve it as amended, subject to the manager's recommendation. Okay. Okay. And uh, any other comments on this, Mr. Saibi? Thank you, Mayor. Um, my question would be just about the mechanical issues. Um, I just have an opportunity to kind of point those out. Obviously, um, they must be significant, um, but I, I gotta gotta ask. Sure, um, they are significant at this point in time. Uh, several of these um, actually have been pulled into the shop. Um, they've been at a stop. Um, they're not even operating to some degree, two of them at this point in time. The other one, I know that we are trying to maintain it um, unless that's changed, um, that was the last status, so they're actually not even operational. We were using backup units at this point in time, um, but again, we needed to go through the normal process before we removed them through the normal process of, uh, of that. So we, we just felt like that it was time to go ahead and bring these forward. We were actually trying to wait to the end of the year to do this. But. Any other comments from council? Can anybody from the public wish to address this item? Uh, hearing none, uh, back to council. Nope, I just, the okay. first truck I ever bought was a 10-year-old, or a 10-year-old truck from the city of Ocala and drove it for another 150,000 miles. So, um, yeah, I, I, I love getting the value out of a truck. <laughs> okay, Ms. Jones, can I have a roll call vote, please? Mr. Robson? Yes. Mr. Tucker? Yes. Mr. Slavey? Yes. Ms. Hoax? Yes. Mr. Crail? Yes. Ms. Tillett? Yes. Mayor Jerome? Yes. Uh, I need approval. I see approval resolution number 2017 70, transfer of Lemon Avenue. Mr. Colbert, can we have the entire read, please? This resolution is entitled the Resolution of the City of Mount Dora, Florida, relating to an agreement between Lake County, Florida, and the City of Mount Dora, Florida, authorizing the transfer of Lemon Avenue, CR 4577, from Lake County, Florida, to the city of Mount Dora, Florida, providing for legislative and administrative findings, providing for authorizing the execution of documents and agreements, and implementation of an interlocal agreement, recognizing and accepting all terms and conditions set forth therein, providing for powers of the city mayor, city manager, city clerk, city attorney, authorizing the implementation of the administrative actions as may be deemed necessary, providing for conflicts, providing for severability, providing for an effective date. Thank you, Ms. Hayes. Uh, thank you, uh, Council. Um, this, as you know, is um, Limit Avenue from Donnelly Street to U.S. Highway 441. It's currently owned and maintained by Lake County. Uh, recently, Lake County paved this area, um, and through that process, we spoke with them in reference to uh, turning over or transferring the service of of the Limit Avenue over to the city of Mount Dora. Um, this will actually allow city Mount Dora to, um, to continue services as we know that we have some challenges where we have the county road, we're limited and we have to wait on those um, services to be completed. So um, this actually will uh, move to, to make that transfer um, very quick uh, for us as far as being able to go out there and enhance that area. We still need to look at the uh, sidewalks that are requested and have been uh, discussed in that area. I did meet with the county a few weeks ago to request that they assist in that uh, process. Um, they stated that's not a typical process in which they do um, assist in. Um, I had asked that they pay up to half of the sidewalks. 
um, they do, did not feel that at that point in time it was something that they should have to pay for, that once they turn the roads over, and even before that, that it would not be something they would look to enhance. Um, so we did reach out to them um, as council had asked um, to see if we could actually have some assistance in that uh, arena. But at, at this point of two weeks ago meeting, there was no uh, assistance offered from them. Um, but um, we would still like to have the road transferred over to the city so that we can begin maintaining it. So I would be glad to answer any questions. Do I have a motion for approval? Second. Mr. Crow. Um, about a year ago, uh, we were working with the county on Fifth Avenue and we sent the the uh, interim city manager out and he did some his best uh, negotiations and um, he came back and said that's what the county offered and I was very proud of city council that evening and we said that's not good enough and I don't think this is good enough um, I think the county needs to provide thirty thousand dollars fifty percent of the um, estimated cost of, of sidewalks and I would urge um, my colleagues on City Council to vote no on this and uh, we'll take another run at with with uh, with the county I mean we're working with an administrator of some kind over there um, that person has supervisors um, they want they would like to get this roadway off of their books and let us maintain it and so on there are benefits to us to doing that, but I, I, I think they need to help us with the with the sidewalks, and um, I hope you agree. Good point. Um, I just real quick, for, um, is there um, who, if it stays under the county, are they responsible for putting any sidewalks in as far as any schools, things like that, that we need to do? No, they had no commitment. I mean, they, they there, are we within any, are we within any school limits that needs to have sidewalks on them? No. Okay. And um, okay, so if there's no requirement for a sidewalk, um, then any developers coming in would have to do it at that point. Yes. Well, when you say there's no requirement for a sidewalk, I mean you know a, a mandated like for. A oh, okay. System. Because there are residents yeah. along yeah. there who right. take their lives into their hands walking to the library. Yeah, I want to know. So I think that yes. So yeah, we, we need have a sidewalk. And, and we did talk about developers on uh, would have to pay for that on their side. Yes, go ahead. Um, just for the record, there's a, um, a state supreme court ruling back in the '50s, I believe it is, that basically says that if over 50% of the property is in the city, that we are responsible for the sidewalk, the curb, the median. Uh, the only thing the county is responsible for is the actual pavement. Um, so, for instance, on Fifth. Uh, we are responsible for the sidewalk, uh, even though it's a county road. Uh, so, you know, and then on Highland Street, we're responsible for all the beautification, the trees and everything, even though it's in the county right away. Uh, but that is based on a state Supreme Court case. Every time that I tried to make the argument on sidewalk, um, they give me a copy of that case. <laughs> so I think I had about six of them in my file. So to recap, it's a different situation than Fifth Avenue, the repaving of Fifth Avenue, because that was the actual asphalt, the street itself, and we're talking now about sidewalks, no, not improving Limit Avenue itself, the, the road. Nothing precludes this from being I, a part of the discussion. I understand. I'm just, this is a new wrinkle that I wasn't aware of. So this, that. But, but I would also share that most of the north side of the limit is undeveloped except for the little bit where our clinic is so as mr simpson began to develop that property we will require him to provide a sidewalk now one of the things that i want to come back to council with in the future working with our planning department is to come up with a sidewalk comprehensive plan so the area where we are connecting to a trail we require something wider than a five foot Hopefully we can get it done quick enough on Lemon that we would put something like an eight foot sidewalk on the north side so that it can eventually connect 
to the uh, trail on Tremaine um, and go through the city that way. So those are things we're looking at for the future. But our estimate for the filling in the gaps is $60,000. And, and part of that plan is what we discussed a few weeks ago when we talked about the sidewalk plan. So defining the areas in which we don't have a sidewalk that would require a sidewalk, et cetera. So that is a plan we will look at just for your information. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Oh, um, I, I'd have to uh, agree with Mr. Crail. Um, I'm, I'm in on, on uh, the idea of negotiating uh, with the county. Uh, I, all of us, I remember our, our last um, uh, session, we had that little drawing there and it showed uh, our taxes and how much of it goes for city tax and county tax. And dang, they still, they, they, they take our money. Um, and you know what, if they want to get out from underneath that road and that opportunity, I, I'm glad to ask them to put up another 30,000. Yeah. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I'm going to oppose my illustrious council here to, to my right. That's made a, made a very good suggestion. Um, I think it's good to leverage whenever we can. Uh, I'm going to trust our city manager that she's done everything that she can <coughs> to leverage that and they've just said no. Now I understand the great leverage we could have by all voting no. Uh, and and uh, that, that, may or may, that may or may not work. Uh, eventually we'll get sidewalks there through development, I believe. Uh, the other thing is uh, I, would, I would suggest uh, if that's a 1950 Supreme, 50s Supreme Court decision out of Florida, I presume Supreme Court, um, maybe a council can get a copy of that and just see, shepherdize it and see if it's been a concept of finding what's more current and see if that is now current. Uh, um, anybody looking at that, any attorney looking at that would say, well, 50s is, it may, or may, may or may not be still valid. So I just suggest that our council take a look at that and concept called shepherdizing and then see if it's valid uh, today. And it may not be, it might've been overruled or qualified. The other comment I have is uh, a comment maybe maybe for our, our police chief. Um, that's a 35 mile an hour speed limit, and um, and that I understand that is kind of a straight shot all the way through from Donnelly to 441. Uh, with there are sidewalks there uh, on the south side, I believe. At least portion, a portion, portion of it is just a portion. Yeah, portion. and I don't know if they're even bombs. used uh, very, very frequently. But 35 miles an hour um, might eventually be uh, too fast for that, and I, that's up to um, people smarter than I to make that decision. But with sidewalks, especially coming in whenever they do, I would, I would be concerned about a 35 mile an hour speed limit. Those are, that that street road is going to be right close to the sidewalk and one little twitch of a steering wheel and we have an accident. So that's just a suggestion to look at. I intend to vote for it. The, um, I'm just trying to look at the, figure out the mileage so real quick. When we go there from that limit uh, Avenue spot all the way down to the high school, are we, aren't we within, what, what's, what's the walking distance? Mile and a half or two miles from the high school? Usually two. It's two, two miles. Two miles. Is that within two miles? Of let's say let's say uh, from the high school lakes from Bristol yes. lakes out that area is within the mile. Mm -hmm. So why aren't sidewalks being required? The, the that, county there's a formula in the county we went through two years ago with Triangle when they tried to stop busing from there. Uh, so if they don't bus uh, at a certain radius, they have to have a clear way to walk there. So I, I can research that and find out as far as the high school. Uh, or the middle school, but uh, middle school there too. So, right. To answer Councilman Rolfson's uh, question or statement, there's a formula, and once the road belongs to us, we would apply the formula. But uh, we work it now as is, and yes, you're right. It's a it's a speed lane right now uh, for people. So I think I'm the only one that wears 35. I'm not sure I would do that. Just stick to that story. <laughs> <laughs> I was thought it was 25. And, and I would also remind you that we know that Lincoln and some other streets parallel and there's other alternative, not the, the only suggestion, but there's other alternative ways to get down to the school. So the formula does look at some of those. Uh, yes, it looks at all that information, just, just for your information. I have, um, Mr. Peters, just for 
refresh my memory of the homes that are along limit now between I think it's really just pretty much between Grandview and Donnelly. Is there any sidewalk there at all? I'm drawing a, um, a photographic blank. The, right the here. existing homes there are probably 70% sidewalk. Okay. Um, and so then, we're we talking have, then we have the stretch where we have that boardwalk that goes to the wetland area. Right. Um, the sidewalk is in there. Um, the, the biggest part of it is down toward Donnelly and up toward 441. It's on the ends. Uh, then we have a little pocket inside. Um, the, the biggest concern that I have is the part going toward 441 got a drainage problem. Yes, and when the DOT widened 441, they will fix the drainage problem. In the meantime, I got to figure out what to do with it. Uh, so um, I've already talked to our drainage consultant about you know, some options that we may have, uh, such as French drains or things of that nature. But um, yeah, but the majority of the sidewalk that's missing is on the ends. I guess I'd like to suggest that that we have our city attorney take a look at the 1950s era, you know, stuff. And and um, if this is not a, you know, critically time sensitive, or even if it is, that that we delay this and until we could table it and until until we get some further information and um, direct the city to go back and negotiate one more time, release the hounds on the Mark to uh, pass on, it's, it's a good suggestion. I want to make sure that there's no, uh, any issues with us uh, tabling this, let's say for a month. We can continue it to, to a date certain of June 20th, maybe, that would be at this point in time, two meetings from now, if that's um, up to the council, June 6th or June 20th. What? Well, why that late? Can we do it at the next council meeting, or is that no? No, you know, we just want to research the things and then give us a well, chance to do some. You're, that's that's you're a chance to do some negotiation through the Your next council meeting is June sixth, so we have three weeks between meetings and then the June twentieth. So that might be a struggle for you to get to the county. Well, my that might help answer. Uh, I think that might be good. Uh, Maybe we'll instead of no right now, and yeah. then we can address it and uh, with some other facts at that point. Let me ask if I might, Mayor, uh, Mr. Peters, is that going to cause any issues if we wait? If I have to get that in the <laughs> okay. Okay. So we have a motion on the floor, though. Okay. No. Well, either, either. Well, let me make my comments then, because okay. I've been listening. Um, I'm, with all respect to your thoughts and the discussion and whether it's a 50s law or not, I tend to look at things a little broader, and I believe we're going to be working with the county for a lot of very, very, very important things in the future. Um, the the 60000 for for sidewalks for our residents, I think, is a reasonable amount for us to pay to keep the process moving. Uh, I would rather see us bring it to closure, take it, and be able to have the ability to do what we need to do with that road. Um, and then move forward because I think there are other things that are going to be much more important that we might want to get into a negotiation piece. I think we were very fortunate on Fifth Avenue and I'm delighted we got it and, and it was a good job and that they came forward, but I believe the county's going to go through a lot of changes. They have a new county manager and things and I would hate for us to be having this discussion six or eight or ten months from now when we could make a decision tonight that's reasonable and that meets the needs of our citizens. So I would like us to go ahead with it, and then I would be voting for it. But whatever the council decides. We do have a motion on the floor. Um, no, did you have a comment? We do have a motion on the floor, and uh, you know, for the approval. Um, does anybody from the public wish to address this issue? And seeing none. Anyone? Yeah, I do. So That's that area is in my district. That's yeah. part of District Three for the most part. And uh, the one gentleman from District Three spoke first time I sat in this seat and his question was about sidewalks I talked to mr. Peters about it I was given the price of sidewalks and uh, I was uh, disappointed at the price of sidewalks I think if the county can come up with any money I see no problem in delaying this for roughly three weeks to our vote to our five weeks excuse me five weeks to our second meeting in June uh, I don't think it's holding a gun at the county. I don't think we're being obnoxious with the county. I think it's a very, I think, viable request of the county. 
they've had that area for how long and let's see if they're willing to come across if they're not then fine and we can move forward physical i'm going to defer to you real quick because um from the standpoint it's been a while since i we were in the middle of the motion and um talking about it and then maybe a topic of uh tabling comes up what, what's the appropriate um, format to do entertain a tabling motion with the other motion on the on the floor if you've got a couple of choices you can vote on the motion and see if it's mike's not on i'm sorry um, but you can vote on the motion and see if it passes if it passes then it's done if it fails then an alternative motion could uh, could be to uh, continue to a time certain mm -hmm. or the alternative would be for the motion to be withdrawn by the maker and the seconder it would be off the table and then it would be appropriate to do a motion to continue either one of those will get you there okay. you made the motion so, Ms. Okay. so it's up to if you want to withdraw and do something like that if not that you will vote if you don't withdraw um i would like to, to withdraw my motion at this time i'm the, i'm the second and i don't want to withdraw it because my other comment i was going to make right my other comment i didn't finish and and it's because i had a moment of thought process is i respect the fact that our city manager has come to us and she said she went and negotiated and she's presenting it saying that at this point she feels she did the best she could if i understood her correctly and i personally believe that i want to support her in that in addition to the comments that were already made as to why i look at it the way i do okay the motion won't be withdrawn but the um i want to make a comment too and uh, tend to agree and um and w with the, the way we're we're heading with this that um you pick battles you pick the certain fights that you can go with and um, um I, and, and if i know miss hayes and she's been uh, she's very aggressive a lot of things that she does she has asked for whatever money she can come out with at this point and if she's asked for and there's they're saying no at this point that's not needing to say that they're going to say no on something else and um and i think there's other things that we can grab the money from them and there's also and the, the fact that i think there's going to be when you talk sidewalks there's a lot of um uh, different grant money for sidewalks since they are safety issues there's a lot of grant money for that you can pull in from the federal government through different sources um i think they're I don't know if they still have the uh the sidewalks uh for the schools issues uh, that they have monies uh, and i think they're they're still giving money out for that and uh, there's other uh safety issues along with for the police department that you can use for uh, for grants and um so along with that maybe with some um uh, arm bending with uh, miss campion a little bit we can uh, talk her into doing a couple of things for us and because uh, she's going to want probably some things from us down the road so i think we can do, do a little a quick pro quo with her and uh, and get some money from the from the county help out with the issue take that sixty thousand down a notch and um so um public's already been asked any more comments from the council okay can I have a roll call vote please miss tillett no miss hoax yes mr rolfson yes mr slavy no mr tucker no mr crail no mayor jerome um yes yeah <coughs> Okay, so we're going, we're going to go back to square one. So instead of being table, it's not there. So we'll have to, we'll bring it back anyway in the future, I'm sure. And uh, we'll sit down and we'll do a little bit of negotiating. And uh, Don't we have to do a, a new motion to, to go back and, you know. have to, she can bring it back. I'll bring it back. She can just bring it back. We, we could, city manager can bring it back yeah. at any time. Yeah. If you want it at a time certain, you could make a motion to bring it at a time certain. You want you would you like a, a time certain motion? I will bring it back to you at the second meeting, June. I'll reach out to the county additionally, um, and to the uh, um, to the public works director as I spoke with before, um, and reach out to Jeff Cole, the county manager, to see if there's any potential funding which they can support with. Um, in the meantime, um, I would say that the Fifth Avenue that I would have would have brought to you in June will probably be delayed because these were a succession of options that we would bring to you. So that will delay the Fifth Avenue uh, presentation of transfer. Um, and the Highland is not in the 
um, in the bucket at this point in time. It's something in the near future, um, but uh, we'll have to time that out now accordingly and work with the county um, attorneys as well as administrators. So that's something we'll go forth and do. I just I have a question. Um, why is there a why is there a um, predetermined? I mean, in other words, why can't you? Why can't we accept fifth before we accept limit? Is that just we can if they it, again they have to be willing to transfer those services at that point in time based on where they're at in their process based on the funding they have set aside um, it's just again into their cycle so i have to get on their list to be able to ask for those funds um, and i had said limit was the one the street being uh, paved so logically that would be the first one we would look to take over so uh, take ownership of so fifth was after that so yeah. that'll still okay. stay in the Okay, so it's going to come back to us on uh, June 20th and we'll take care of it at that point. Okay, uh, now to city manager's report. Yes, I'd like to ask our um, uh, deputy chief uh, Griner to come up and speak just for a moment. Um, he has some good information in reference to um, our new car trucks. So I'd like to, him to offer that. So if you will do that, Deputy Chief Ryder. Sure. We're hoping to have a ceremony to sort of welcome our new fire trucks into the fleet. They're in Florida. Uh, they're getting some work done at the dealership right now. Um, they also have to get some uh, radios put in by Lake County Communication Shop. Um, I just wanted to talk with you all about a date because we would love to have you join us for a pushback ceremony, um, possibly the Tuesday after Memorial Day. So that's May 30th. What's a pushback? Thank you for asking. <laughs> so, uh, in the 1800s, uh, fire trucks were drawn by horses. It was kind of difficult to roll, get the horses to back them into the station so you don't let the horses push them back. Um, so, it kind of became a tradition with new fire trucks. First time, you have a little ceremony, push them back into the station. Okay. Time for pushback is a good term. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tuesday, May 30th, 9 a.m. It's good for me. It's good for you. That's About the rest. The well, wait, let's see. Maybe the rest can't. Sorry, ma'am. No. We'll post it on 9 a.m. We'll post it on the website. We'll, um, Chief Griner, or W. Chief Griner will reach out with Lisa, our PIO, um, and we'll actually put it out on the website and do a news release and so forth going forward. Thank you. Thank you all. Okay, thanks. Um, also, uh, as part of uh, my requirements to you is to provide you a monthly accomplishment and CIP status and updates. As you'll notice through the report, there are various updates to projects as well as um, just general information of uh, accomplishments in each of the departments. Um, you'll also notice the performance indicators um, included in your package and you'll notice that some of these are changing from month to month because the departments are redefining and looking at the processes. Um, again, you'll see this process change next year as we uh, become fully embroiled in the Florida Benchmark Consortium. You'll see these uh, performance measures change over time. Um, we've also included some general cash basis and cash balances um, in which again as we discussed at the revenue meeting for the budget in the first meeting we will uh, redefine those uh, reports to truly give you a fund balance on those funds that are appropriate as well as a cash basis on those funds that also reflect that information so you'll see some uh, some changes in the reports but we'll continue to give those in the near future um, other than that, I believe at this point in time, unless um, someone on staff has something different, that's it from my report this week. Thank you. <coughs> Any questions of the city manager? Um, <coughs> I have some board appointments coming up. Um, one, the Historic Preservation Board, District 1, you have an appointment for us? I do. Um, I would uh, like to appoint Thomas York Cutshaw to the Historic Preservation Board. Um, Tom uh, lives in a historic house, excuse me, <coughs> well, 1920s house, and uh, has has renovated, has hands-on um, knowledge of the, our historic um, preservation requirements, and I think he'll, um, he'll, he'll serve all of us well, especially the Historic Preservation Board, so. Motion for uh, the appointment. 
No. Oh, nominate. I move to nominate Thomas York Cutshaw to the Historic Preservation Board as the District 1 representative. All in favor? Aye. 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 I don't think we need a second for a real board appointment. We've been doing it, it's been some debate and everybody's been doing it. We don't really need to do it. Can't hurt. We, doesn't hurt. <laughs> doesn't hurt. And uh, CRA Advisory Committee appointment, District 3? Yes, I'd like to appoint Armin Massey. Mr. Massey lives. Uh, right down the street. I'm drawing a blank on his address. On Tremaine. Uh, Harmon's been in town. Harmon's been in town for a couple years now. He's retired military. Uh, as a couple weeks ago, I talked about attorneys. Uh, just, just to show there's no prejudice, Harmon is an attorney that, in his background on the previous life, and he's just an outstanding gentleman. Okay. If he's a pilot and an attorney and also a JAG officer, former JAG officer, he's got to be good. That's what I thought. <laughs> so I think yeah, you're, I think right. We don't have to do a motion in a second. We just we just do a, an approval. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. And the other one was cool. And um, did you want to talk about her group? Go back on that one. Right. I just wanted to give council a quick update on the ISBA. The meeting was this past Monday um, with the county and the city of Eustis. Um, we had a couple uh, members there. Uh, Councilman Robson was there and the mayor was there, so I appreciate you attending. Um, basically, at the, this meeting, the um, same outcome as the previous meeting, um, County <laughs> Manager uh, David Heath basically um, told the City of Eustis that um, the request didn't meet um, requirements and the, the county's expectations and that the county commission would not approve such a request. Um, they have been given an opportunity to go back and redraw the lines, or redraw their proposal of um, adjustments to the ISBA to, and to provide a narrative, um, and then reach back out to the city um, to provide us the next alternative date. Um, so um, we'll await that at that same point in time. Uh, council will attend that same meeting with myself and I'll let you know when that is in the future. Um, but we will also, from a staffing perspective, um, I'd like to, uh, to bring it back as part of our strategic plan because I do believe it's part of that strategic plan in the JPA um, and um, to discuss that at our June 10th meeting when we talk about strategic plan um, and the facilitator, Marilyn Crotty, will be here for that meeting. So um, at that point in time, we may have a little bit more information, but I'd like to at least present to you some maps and some of the thought processes in which uh, staff and uh, and so forth have gone through so that we can possibly pro provide an alternative to the current ISBA in the future. Thank you. Uh, question? Uh, I, I really like that idea. Those of us that attended that, I'm not sure if I can even comment, Mr. Chris. This qua are we quasi judicial as counsel if this comes to us, or is this something we can? It's, you know? it, it's something that you can can comment on. Okay. Okay. I yeah. don't work? know in what form it may come sure. to you if it ever does. It, it may come back to us in a, a mediation process, and uh, I'm, I just wanted to, I'm always concerned about overstepping my bounds and leaving my mouth run more than it has. But it's a great idea to have those maps because uh, it really is crucial, one picture being worth a thousand words concept, to see what. Eustace is trying to do uh, that is, let me put it this way, there must be 150 seats in the council room in Eustace and they were packed. It was packed, it was standing room only, and virtually everybody there was against the Eustace process, uh, all wearing red shirts, vote no type thing. Redfields, Francis Springs, the whole area. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, we need to know as a council what's going on there, and it's really going to be helpful to do that. I appreciate that. Thank you. Okay, that's on you. And uh, we're going to the city attorney's report. Thank you, Mayor. I have no additional items to bring to you. Okay, uh, down to the uh, council. Uh, Mr. Tucker. Yes, I've got a couple. I've got a couple things. One, first one is I like to. Uh, Tell everyone about our city clerk. She was elected president. 
of her group, the Florida Association of City Clerks, and I believe she takes over uh, leadership in June. So congratulations. Now <laughs> uh, the second thing I have, and I'll be very brief on it, and uh, don't ask me how, I ended up with a TV crew today in Mount Dora, and the TV crew was out of Brazil. They were doing a tour of the town. They have heard about Mount Dora. They hooked up with an affiliate in Orlando. And uh, they hit several restaurants, went to the Lakeside Inn. They walked about the town taking numerous photos. And it's going to be on a cable channel sometime in June. Uh, I don't speak Portuguese very well. So uh, I got a lot of nods. And, but I did not get a firm date. And when I get a firm date, I'll let you know it's free advertising for the city. And I was, you know, very, yes. Uh, we couldn't have, as somebody told me who I was having lunch with, we couldn't have paid to get that advertising. It was just really good. Uh, the third thing, and this is somewhat, um, I feel bad about saying it, but I have to say it. I hate to go back and repeat some things from a couple weeks ago. Um, I want to let it go, but um, our city attorney, I think that was a very weak apology. I'll let it go at that. I'm not going to beat a dead horse, but that was a, a, just a very, I read it and reread it, and I just, I'm not going to change anything, but it's, it was a very weak apology on your staff's part. Uh, it's, it's, that's the way I feel. So uh, I will move forward. Uh, and I'll get through it. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Slavin. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you very much. I would like to start off by, uh, I got, I got several items tonight. Um, start off by uh, thanking all the new board appointees, um, Mr. Massey and uh, Mr. Cutshaw. In fact, from your chair, if you look, you can see him in the audience right here. So thank you, Mr. Cutshaw. Um, and a couple of items I just wanted to share um, on our, our CIP. Uh, I wanted to make sure that um, at our next time we talk about uh, and we think about um, placeholder items. I know we've talked about a few of those. One of them that we've talked about a little bit generally, and it's, it's not necessarily consensus, but it is making provisions for park space on the east side of 441, possibly or probably along the trail. Um, you know, and, and uh, you know that would be a, a great opportunity for us to put that money aside with the idea of our bond ideas that we might be floating around. Uh, that that could be something to think about. Um, the other one, I'm just happy to report it, had some communication with our city manager about the monuments or the, the entry points in the city, and I know that that's coming up in the CIP. And I'll tell you, you know, I, I, I bemoaned it a few times, but those portable signs just don't look classy as, as wonderful as Mount Dora is, so I'm glad to see that. Um, and, uh, you know, we'll talk about a couple other things. One other one was the sidewalks. So we had mentioned in the CIP some very large multi-million dollar amount. And so I wanna make sure that we get um, in the right, I, um, how would you say it, um, categorization of what we have to do. And I don't know what have to means, there might be air quotes around it, what we want to do and that sort of thing because I, I think we have to make some really tough decisions. So to have it as best we can to understand it. And that's why I think that the uh, limit road sidewalk would fall wherever wherever it falls in that hierarchy. Um, the um, other one, um, the, um, the comments by citizens, Mr. Wood talking about the 44 uh, versus 441. Uh, certainly if, if we need to take action, do we need to put a, an item on the agenda for next meeting? so that we can um, make a statement as a council, you know, what's more important, if that's the way we do that, or what would we do? Well, the, no, yeah. because I, what, what it is right now, I realize you like a motion, but from what I'm gathering, what's, what he's talking about, we're talking about a shovel ready. They're, they're, they're classifying this, MPO classifies that project as shovel ready, whereas 441 is way off in the distance. So when state money is being given, when the money is freed up by the state or money's coming in by uh, the federal government, if they go on to an infrastructure program, given out uh, however many millions or billions that they're going to give out for their uh, infrastructure program, that money starts filtering down. We're going to give it out to shovel-ready projects. 
So um, there's so if you take it off, has no priority from that uh, from that right there, um, and put 441 and um, and money is available. If your money coming in Mount Dora for those projects will be probably not happening at that point. So this is the reason why, from what I'm gathering, keeping it as a shovel, you know, keeping it as a priority, the shovel ready project versus a project that is not shovel ready. And I think we had, it was just a consensus, as I remember it's just the last time, there wasn't a motion. Not a motion or anything, no. Well, I could be wrong, but that's my memory. Right, it is. I, I, I guess my concern would be just, you know, a oh, uh, big picture, just because it's a, could be a shovel ready <coughs> project doesn't necessarily mean that we want it. And, and, and I'm just, that's why I wanted to, to maybe have council get to discuss it to see if this was truly a priority for us it sounds from this was the first i'd heard when jenny you know stood up and said hey we haven't been contacted here are the issues as i see it as a resident of that area um so you know we always say that we want to drive the train not let the train drive us or run over us so the, to me this is something that i think we should discuss to say hey is this really our priority and is this what we want the county to be doing um in, in our bailiwick okay so this was one of the conversations i had with the public works director again at lake county when i met with them in reference to the sidewalks um i you know we PJ Fish asked about 44B being shovel ready. What was our priority? That's when I stipulated, spoke with him and said that really 441 was the priority. Um, so they they can adjust it. Um, they need assistance from the county. So this again is where we have to go out to the county and ask for their assistance um, because they can change that shovel ready and reprioritize it to 441. And um, I know that Mr. Peters has some concerns of, of some other things that can happen and change. But you know, again, that's where we have two, four lane versus six <coughs> lane at that, and it's a, it's a dangerous rated number three in the county, I think, on, on the dangerous list. So at the intersection of 44 and 44, yeah, 441 of the intersection 441 and 44. So again, I think it's something we can mention. Um, I can ask that TJ can meet with us at the county when I go there and meet with him on the sidewalks because I do believe 441 should be considered, especially since we are going to spend money from a city perspective, the FDOT perspective, to in in um, to make adjustments to 441, 429, and 46, where 44 can happen later, you know. So, and actually, what Denny shared was not new information. He shared that before. He's he's used that example before. They have always not felt that the 444B component was going to meet the residential needs out there. That's been on the books from him and their group, he's representing them. Um, Mr. Mayor, I want, wonder if it would be appropriate because shovel ready is a term, I think I understand, but I'm not exactly sure what it means and so on. Would it be appropriate um, to ask uh, TJ or somebody to tell us about how the priorities are and how they could be switched and would we lose anything by Right, and he's scheduled to be here June 20th. So again, the 20th, I think, is a good opportunity for all of us to sit back and look at it. We scheduled TJ for June 20th. We've scheduled um, in July, We've ske or it will be scheduling Mary Brooks, hopefully, I believe, and then, yes. Okay, so we have scheduled some of them over the summer, so TJ happens to be in June, so I think the timing may work well for us. The uh, 22nd, I have a, an executive committee meeting uh, that day, and the 24th, I am going to be calling for so I'm asking you to attend that meeting uh, on my behalf, you know, to be the alternate at that meeting, and I'll give them heads up uh, that uh, that's in the talk about June it. 20? May, May. May, May, May 24th. Mm -hmm. You can make, if you can be there as an alternate that day, and I'll give them a heads up, and maybe we can even get an, an item, uh, a quick item on, um, I don't know if they'll put it on the agenda, but something you can bring up at the end of the meeting uh, during the, um, the you know the comments from the board at that point i'll have to check my okay, work schedule can, but you can make it you can make yes it. sir I, I'll, I'll, I'll have a conversation with mr fish in the interim i'll let this haze know okay okay i'm sure somebody was there if he can't right yes okay that <coughs> was maybe we'll be discussing that issue uh, in, in general that's, that's not an item for discussion oh, okay. here but he can bring it up at the end of that meeting yeah if you wanted to so. yeah okay 
Okay. Just so you're on record. Thank you. And I'll bring it up to our, I'll bring it up to our exec, executive committee so it's on record at that point also. Okay, we want to discuss more on it. Thanks. So I think we're good there. Um, then I, I forgot to mention the placeholders. We obviously was the 11th Street um, Grove land looking out onto the lake at 11 acres. And I know that's that's there. I think that's not the item uh, except for the cost. Um, and um, uh, a couple others. One was um, we, we had talked a little bit, the city manager and I, about um, an issue that some citizens have, have brought up as far as um, the city code for um, sidewalk dining. Uh, in, in the portion thereof about the chairs and the tables. So the code is fairly clear that it says e every evening or, or when you close that you have to bring your chairs in um, and some restaurants don't. Um, and so the question is, you know, are, are we not enforcing our rules appropriately? But part two of that is, of course, we just think more of it is, it's kind of nice having those chairs there after hours. I see people using them. Um, so it seems to me like maybe the, the answer would be to amend the, the code to just allow the chairs to be there. And, you know, of course, if whatever other safety concerns that I'm, I haven't thought through um, would be addressed, but it just seems like rather than having some citizens always mad that something's not getting enforced properly, that we adjust it. And that's kind of what my thoughts were. And, and, and as discussed um, at several meetings, we will bring those to you, I think, through the process of this year so that they can amend. We've got several amendments. Uh, a couple things I believe on yards and some of those type things that I would suggest that we maybe put them all together as one agenda item. Obviously, they're going to be different ordinances, but we can bring them at one time and discuss them uh, and present it to council. And I would propose that we do that either in June or August. I'm open to either one. August gives us a little more time to identify anything else in the time period, but then it kind of begins again for October 1, so we can make them effective within that 30-day period, if that's okay with council. I, I would say if it's a policy issue like an ordinance, that's fine. I'm, yeah, there are ordinances. Please, if it's enforcing that, uh, I, we just need to tell our manager to take the chairs away if they need to be take, get that get that done. Uh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think we just, it's an ordinance in this case, so I just think we need to adjust the ordinance. We just need to bring it back. Probably at the time that it was adopted, it made sense, but since then, I, I believe it needs to be adjusted. Uh, and then uh, uh, last two items. One is I, I took a, a trip down to Winter Garden um, and checked out their situation. Um, and uh, I drove into their parking garage that's uh, in place there. And I used uh, an old real estate appraiser trick of analyzing the oil spots um, on every level to see usage. And uh, so it kind of got a feel for how much usage they have on their, on their garage. But more important to me, I thought, was um, the signage they had on the main drag, if you will, their, their Donnelly Street, um, was that they had a limit of parking time. And uh, that, that I thought, in concert with the parking garage, was, was uh, kind of interesting. So I, you know, if you ever get a chance to check out Winter Garden, I think um, the parallels of their city and ours are, th there's some things there that are, are interesting. Um, so anyway. Uh, and then the, the, the last thing I just want to mention, uh, you know, in all respect to Mr. Tucker, um, in reference to the apology from our city attorney, we, we made a motion and we voted, I think, 6-1, and that motion required certain things. And I went back and I read what the, the motion was, and, and while it may have been, as you described, um, I think um, our city attorney met the requirements of our motion. And I think if we wanted more, it was incumbent upon us to ask for more. Um, but absent that, I thought that um, the requirement was met. And that's all I had. Mr. Creel. Uh, I just wanted to add my congratulations to uh, Ms. Johns on her ascension to the presidency. <laughs> I don't know whether there's enough money in the budget to widen the doors, so. <laughs> 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 Congratulations. That's all. Okay, my, uh, Ms. Oates. I have a couple things. Um, Dr. Karen spoke to us earlier at public and he had five items. What is our process that we get back to him on those items? Because some of them I, in listening to what I heard him say, is more of a clarification. So is that a process, Ms. Hayes, that you do? He talked about the gray water and the water pressure. Uh, parking rumors, and we know what all that is about, just to clarify for him, and then Lauren with his article, Drill Hills, and then of course we've already talked about the 44B construction with 
with um, Mr. Wood's comments. What What is our process that we follow up on? Because I, for the last several months sit here and I know the residents come and they bring things and we make a list, I guess, but I never hear what happens as a council as a follow up to the residents for them to take time to share it with us. Um, typically, if they provide uh, an email or a phone number, I do reach back out to them um, as, as appropriate. And with if, if I have an answer that's been provided by council or it's an answer that I should provide to them, I do reach back out to them. Um, we have in a couple cases actually prepared an agenda item at one of the next meetings and address it at that point in time. Um, and then um, the final item has actually been on the website. Usually it's a 30 day return in some type of form um, that it's provided back to them and, and you know, support information or evidence is also provided. We've been using the website to record okay. everything into um, a parking garage, a good example. We put all the information out there on the parking garage, um, but we don't actually, we have not at, the, at this point in time actually put a memo with it to explain the process. We put the data out there. Um, so that's the next step that we'll take in the parking garage. I am open to providing those under my report each week if that is something that council would prefer, just so that it's documented and provided, um, or every you know meeting um, accordingly. So that's something that we're definitely open to. But I have been trying to reach out to each of the um, uh, the folks who have mentioned something. Okay, okay. Um, I too um, feel like Mr. Tucker does regarding the letter, Mr. Colburn. Um, because we didn't get to read it ahead of time and you did read it to us, but I'm a person who processes it also. I disagree with you, Mr. Slavey. All of the points haven't been met, but the city manager and I have discussed the follow-up to who is going to be municipal certified and whether or not deadlines will be met. I understand Ms. Cockcroft is, is the person that is going to classes and things, but I also understand there's a very defined process to where you have to be eligible to sit for the test by October and then have to be accepted to sit for the test. And I say this because this is the best information I have. I've re really never seen anything black and white that says this is what the process is. What I don't want to have happen, since I feel very responsible in, in, in the sense of, even though we all voted, I made the motion for us to be positioned to move forward. That was my interest, is moving forward. Still very concerned about what took place, but trying to position us so we could move forward and not be in a position to be looking for another attorney group. With that said, then I want to know we're going to be meeting the deadlines and that we don't get a information come January of, oops, we're not going to make it because this, this, or this happened. Because there are other ways that your firm could have municipal attorney by partnering with somebody or doing a contract. I, I don't know all the legal terms. I just know there are other options. So if Ms. Cockcroft is the individual from your firm who's going to be the municipal certified attorney for us, based on what our standards are at this point, then I would like to know that the process is being followed forward and that we get status reports, which is what Ms. Hayes had agreed to do with her um, uh, report when we knew information. But that definitely know where we are for the, if the October date is a true date, that we know where we are for that. Right, and I committed that on the um, second, or the first meeting of each month, beginning in July, that that will be a memo as part of my report to council, just with a, a status as to where we're at in that process. So that there will be a um, information provided to you each month. If, if I could clarify, I mean, I, I understand what you're saying, but I'll, I'll be glad to make the motion. I mean, uh, it was within a year, I think it was, that they have yep. someone certified. If, if they don't, then I'm first one they'll say, well, you didn't do it. And now it's- Well, and that's what I mean. Yeah. That's why I think we need to track it to know, is it happening? Because if it's gonna happen, we're gonna have to change it anyway, because yeah. the timeline isn't gonna be I, but, but I'm But I'm on board with you. Let's yeah. see, that's what I'm saying. Anything else? Now, we'll go to something lighter, go ahead. if I may. <laughs> red Nose Day next Thursday to help with poverty for kids. So I bought everybody your red nose. Yeah. And if you want to get more, it's not funny when you talk. Um, <laughs> get them from Walgreens. This is one of the programs. But you know, I'm very much with the food pantry and into what we're doing no, hold on, hold on. and everything. So I wanted you to be aware this is a program for the um, National. And in your little nose, it tells you all about it. But the 50% of all the money they raise goes to take care of not only kids in the United States, but in uh, uh, around the world who are in poverty. And I just think it's an important thing. So here you got it. Thank you. Thank you.
this and council ever normal. I don't care. Anything else, Ms. Huggs? Anything else? No, I'm sorry, I'm good. That's good, thank you. End it with that. Okay, <laughs> Mr. Olson. Thank you. Uh, let me remind everybody that, uh, and I'm not going to say any more about it. I said my piece about the uh, letter uh, a time or two ago. The reason we're in this bind is the dissimilar or disparity of information we got from the mayor and then call it clarified it when I was uh, questioning it a uh, time ago. Um, the information was not correct that we got and that's upon which we based the motion. And that was uh, why we're in this dilemma. And it, it is what it is, but uh, that should never happen again where we have meetings and we have representatives at our meetings, at those meetings, and give us inaccurate information upon which we base decisions. That's just really wrong. It's unfair, and I'll leave it at that. Uh, I want to congratulate Gwen, as I have personally before, on, on her soon-to-be coronation. Uh, and well-deserved. Uh, a credit to Mount Dora, a credit to her personally and professionally. And I know in attending Florida League of Cities meetings how, how highly respected she is in the entire group. And I want to also thank uh, John, uh, Mr. Peters, for uh, paying such close attention to sidewalks in my district. Uh, it's really important for the safety of uh, those people there, and I thank you very much for that. And they have asked me to thank you, and I do that. Thank you very much. That's all. Congratulations, Gwen. You're going to be really busy, right? With the, 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 that's the epitome of the other duties as assigned um, term. Um, I'd just like to make a report from the Mount Dora Community Trust, since I'm the representative for, for the council on it. Um, this year, we awarded 45 scholarships, um, totaling more than $35,000 and we have another $20,000 that's being processed now of, as far as scholarship renewals, not first-timers. We also um, just did our, it's not quarterly, it's three times a year, what do you call that, triennially? Triennial, um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, um, made uh, ten grant awards uh, last week. Um, to different organizations um, in the Mount Dora um, family, uh, totaling $61,200, going to various and sundry uh, groups. And I'd like to, at this point, to get it on the record to do a plug for the community trust. You know, um, you can set up a, um, not just a, um, a short-term foundation, but sub-trust, yes. Um, you, you can set up a subtrust, or you can also um, do estate planning with them. So uh, some people have uh, turned over or, or pledged that uh, when, when they leave this earthly life that their um, certain portion of their estate or all of it uh, goes towards um, you know, enhancing the um, prosperity and livability of, of the Mount Dora area. So um, it, was, it was really a pleasure to be able to award the scholarships this year. I went to Mount Dora High School on Friday, and then um, yesterday I was at the Mount Dora Christian Academy, um, and um, Kathy was there at the, at the high school too. And it, it, it's fun, I, got, I did that last year, and that's one of my favorite, favorite things to do, so that's, what, that's all my report. Thank you. Okay, um, Gwen, congratulations. You did a great mm -hmm. job. Uh, doing that and getting that and your certifications or everything you've done to, to reach to attain the level that you that you're reaching so congratulations on that and uh, I know you're going to do a great job doing that and um, and I want to thank the uh, the council for their earlier discussion on that uh, on the Lemon Avenue um, resolution and uh, a lot of good discussion went on there and you don't always have to be you know seven zero or whatever five twos whatever votes come the way they are and we're all good to go with that so appreciate all your comments on that um, and um, I will be going um, the 23rd, 24th, 25th of May and uh, going to be taking my wife for a little trip for her birthday and uh, so you will be in charge Miss Tillett and uh, you will be acting at that point, 23rd, 24th, 25th, that's next week, right? 
And uh, um, and uh, for our volunteers, and uh, it's going to be uh, from Gavin a really good program. It's going to be the first one, so um, we'll be I'm sure building on that from this year forward. So we'll try to do our best with that, and um, um, and what we can do for the uh, for the volunteers, because like we mentioned earlier, uh, the volunteers what makes um, Mount Dora uh, the way it is, and uh, we can't. We can't do the things that we do without all the different volunteers we have and the different organizations that we have and the individuals who just go in there and don't even want recognition and um, um, clean up parks, pick up, uh, um, she, even, she even got me in the habit of doing it now. Um, I walk, take a walk with her, we go downtown for lunch once in a while and she sees a piece of paper, when I say she, Miss Hayes, sees a piece of paper on the ground, she'll step, stoop, pick it up. And um, so now I find myself as I'm walking down, I see a piece of paper or something on the street, I'll pick it up, throw it in the nearest, uh, nearest trash can. And um, so anyway, this is what we all have to do. Yes. I, I, I want to say one more at, at a boy. Go ahead. If you haven't been downtown recently, um, you need to go downtown. Our city manager has um, mobilized the troops and it's looking really pretty. Uh, we've got lots of color, we've got more plantings, we're getting sculpture that's gonna be sort of on, on loan, you know, like art galleries loan art around to different uh, establishments. But uh, there's a gentleman, I believe at Renegers, who brings sculpture in to put on some of those um, annoying bump outs <laughs> so that people won't drive over them um, and, and break the curb. So it, it really looks good. And so I wanted to say, good job. Okay. And whoever's 